Hi guys, everyone, 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 kamusta kayong lahat? So this is our guided exercises and these are the proposed solution for the guided exercises. Okay, let's start with problem 1. This is a problem, okay, Burma. Okay, so hold on to your guided exercises kasi baka, uh, ma'am, wait lang, wait lang, uh, gan, uh, hindi ko makita yung guided, so have a copy habang tayo ay, habang ikaw ay nanonood. Okay, so let's pinpoint which is the current. Accounts payable after deducting debit balances in suppliers' accounts amount to 100. The problem here is, nag-deduct siya. Dineduct niya yung 100,000 kasi nakita niya debit balance siya sa uh, supplier's account. Remember, supplier's account naka-debit. Parang receivable pa rin siya ni supplier. Okay, so if receivable pa rin siya ni supplier sa'yo, ibig sabihin payable mo pa siya. So, let's do it at 4-1. And remember that if a transaction is a supplier and it's used for operation, it's used for trading, it's usually current assets, uh, current liabilities. Ano? Okay. Then we go for accrued expenses. Okay. If you're holding your guided exercises, please hold on to it. Okay. So accrued expenses na 1.5. Okay. That's current. And then we have credit balance in customer's account. This is actually unearned revenue. Okay, kasi naka-credit siya sa customer's account. Eh, parang negative. Uh, Nag-negative na sa iyo. Okay, kaya, uh, the customer account, naka-credit siya. So, sa iyo, on your part, is actually unearned revenue. Okay, so that's 500,000. Kasi hindi mo pa na-earn. Okay, so current. And then, the estimated expenses liability for coupons. Kasi, pinapresenta ng customers. So, once pinapresenta ng customers, demandable na yung obligation. You have to render kung ano ipinangako mo sa kanya. Ano? So, total current liabilities. Tanan! You just add for 1, 1.5, 500, 600, 67. Okay? So, share dividends payable is actually not part of the liabilities, okay, kasi shares, and then we have claims against, so sa claims, uh, we'll go on to the claims uh, provisions part, provisions and contingent liability, okay, okay, so, yeah, problem two, so, so problem two, we were given notes, current liabilities on, on December 31, 2020, so you have to take note of the date, huh? So, yan. Remember the definition of current liabilities. Uh -huh. So, the first one, pumasok siya sa criteria 12 months after, payable 12 months after the reporting period. Kasi maturity niya is 2021. So, pasok mo siya. 30,000. Then, 2023, hindi pwede. Lampas. Okay. Next, 8% note, payable. 11 equal annual principal payments plus Interest beginning December 31, 2021. So, you just extract. So, 1, 1, 100, you extract the current portion, which is the first equal annual principal payments plus interest. So, how do you do that? That's 1,100 divided by 11. Again, 1,100 divided by 11 to get the first. Okay. So, you'll get 100,000. Okay, next, guaranteed debentures, due 2022, Lampas. Annual sinking fund requirement, okay, so th that's actually, uh, sinking fund is an asset, okay, so parang collateral lang siya. Okay, so, and also, ang kakabit niya, although this is a, um, uh, tawag din eh, ang kakabit niya kasi is, non-current. So, this is also non-current, even if this is per year. Okay, you remember that. Kapag nakakabit siya sa non-current, this is also non-current. Ano? Okay, so, the total current liabilities is 130,000. Okay, ito lang dalawa. Okay, 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 okay. So, yun. Next, problem 3. Nakita nyo ng sagot. Haba ng problem na. Okay, so, sabi... Ang hinahanap is what is the amount of the notes payable that should be classified as current on December 31, 2020. Okay? So, tingnan natin yung conditions. Okay? Kasi, pareha silang pasok sa 2021. Okay? Kasi, December 31, 2021. Parehas pasok. 
However, there are certain conditions that need to be taken care of. So, the 2020 financial statements were issued on March 31, 2021. On January 31, 2021, the entire 5 million balance of the 12% note payable was refinanced through issuance of a long-term obligation payable lump sum. Under the loan agreement, for the 10% note, the entity has the discretion to refinance the obligation for at least 12 months after December 31, 2021. So, between the two, knowing these two conditions, Aline and current. I think the current one is the 5 million. Why? Pumasok siya, yung refinancing after the reporting period, which is December 31. Kailan ba siya na-refinance? January 31, 2021. Okay, so lampas. But before the issuance of the financial statement. So, siya lang yung pumasok. Why? The 3 million is na-refinance siya after December, uh, uh, after December 31, 2021. Or ma-refinance siya at least 12 months after the December 31, 2021, okay? And may discretion, discretion yung entity to refinance. Okay, so, naging non-current siya. That's why the only current portion is 5 million. Okay? I hope you're getting all these, guys. <laughs> okay? So, yun. Next, problem 4. You have, uh, this one is, what amount should be reported as, reported as unearned revenue at year end? So, this is my favorite so, we are going, these are gift certificates. Ano? So, if you are an accountant ng isang mall na mahilig magbigay ng gift certificate, so you'll encounter this one. Okay? I have made a T-account. Okay? So, the T-account used by many. So, ganto T-account of the unearned revenue. So, anong laman niya? So, kasi, di ba, ang unearned revenue is actually liability. So, ang beginning balance niya is nakakredit. And then, ipasok mo yung gift certificate sold kasi lahat yan is liability mo. Kasi once ma-present nila yan, may, may obligation tag ka to exchange or to recognize it as good as cash. Ano? Or, if may kapalit na product, as good as, uh, as good as, uh, basta. Basta pwede siya dun sa product na yan. Okay? Then, so debit side, i-deduct mo na sa kanya yung gift certificates redeem kasi syempre uh, na-redeem na, tanggalin mo na siya sa unearned revenue mo, recognize mo na siya as revenue, and then syempre tanggalin mo din sa kanya yung unredeemed gift certificates para makita mo kung en, ano yung ending balance. Ma'am, bakit pati unredeemed? Kasi there are certain gift certificates na may redemption period. Okay. So, yon Pero, I think, there's already a law kapag ang gift certificate mo is equivalent sa cash is wala siyang expiration date. I know, if, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, beginning balance, we have 650. So, nakalagay naman doon sa problem, 650. Then, gift certificate sold to 250. You have gift certificates redeemed, 1950, and then unredeemed na 100. You'll get the answer, oh, 850,000. O, oh, di ba ang bilis? So, you just add this, and then add this, and then, pag na-foot mo na silang dalwa, you minus the debit from the credit. If malaki ang credit, nasa credit side siya, 850 ang sagot. Okay, pwede mo din tong gamitin kapag nawawala ang mga bagay-bagay. Na, so yan. Paano ginagamit? Um, the quadrant rule. Okay, mamano yung the quadrant rule. Kapag, for example, hinahanap ko yung, big, yung beginning balance, nawawala. So, I'm just going to squeeze it. Ang quadrant rule is, I think hindi ko pa ito na-discuss na sa inyo. Quadrant rule is where you divide the T-account into four quadrants. Quadrant, Ang quadrant one is always the area sa T-account mo na may nawawala. Or dun yung hahanapin mo. So, for example, beginning balance yung nawawala. Say, for example, 650. Okay, hindi mo alam na 650 yon, Nawawala siya. So, here, this is quadrant one. Quadrant 2, Quadrant 3, Quadrant 4. Okay? So, pag dito sa kabila ang nawawala, 
this is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. Ano mang, anong gagawin? Quadrant 1 is addition. So, you add all of the contents here. Quadrant 2 is sub subtraction. So, you deduct. So, pag na-add mo na to, deduct mo to. Quadrant 3 is addition again. Okay? So, add mo kung ano man ang laman nito. And then, quadrant 4 is minus lahat ng laman. Okay, so let's do this. Kunwari hindi mo alam na 650 to. Okay? So, anong gagawin? Quadrant 1, add mo lahat. So, sasabayan ko kayo. 250,000. Okay? Dito na nga. 2,250,000. Plus, wala. Ah, sorry. Plus 0. Kasi 0 yung ano. Uh, ah, mali, 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 mali. 2 to 50,000. Then, punta ka na sa quadrant 2, two which is 850. So, minus 850,000. Okay. Then, punta ka quadrant 3. Wala namang laman. So, plus 0. And then, you go to quadrant 4. Dalawa ang laman niya. Minus 100,000. And then, minus 150,000. Tasala to. Kasi, merong mga, sabi na eh. Merong mga coma. Okay. So, yun ang sagot. Negative 650, you, you make alis-alis the negative sign. So, maging 650 lang siya. Cheng. How to check? Siyempre, dapat 850 ang sagot niya. Ang tama. Okay? So, along the way, didiscuss ko ulit yung quadrant rule. That's a lifesaver, itong quadrant rule na to. Basta marunong kang gumawa ng T-account, napaka-handy-handy man ng quadrant rule. Ano? Okay. So, that's for problem 4. Problem 5, meron na naman ako, quadrant. Okay, so this is escrow liability. So, hawak nyo naman guided exercises nyo. So, you just remember the T-account. You have beginning balance, escrow payments, interest on escrow, and then sa other side, you have real estate taxes paid and then service fee if meron. Okay, usually the service fee is a percentage. Okay, so multiply mo lang siya kung ano yung basis niya, yun yung service fee. Okay? Then, the ending balance. So, let's extract. We have 700,000 for beginning balance. Nagbayad daw ng 1.518 na escrow payments. And then, may interest on escrow na 50,000. On the other side, nagbayad ng real estate tax na 1,720. And then, you have service fee that is 10% of the interest this one, so 5,000. 5, then you just foot and then cross foot. You'll get the answer of 605,000. Okay, okay, okay. Is that, is that good? Is that good? Uh-huh. So, yeah. So, that's problem five. Let's go to problem six. This is bonus. So, problem six, you have four conditions. Bonus is a certain percent of net income before bonus and before tax, after bonus, but before tax, after bonus, and after tax, then after tax, but before bonus. So, in your book, you were given a way, like the algebraic expression. Here, I'll be giving you an excerpt of a, um, a way on how to account for uh, bonus using a formula. Ana. So, English, English pa si mamay. Basta yun. So, pag before bonus and before tax ang condition, the formula is very easy. You have bonus is equal to NI, that's net income before bonus and tax, and then times B percent or the bonus percent. So, yun lang. Pag, ito ang pinakamadali, before bonus and before tax. Okay, so, given ka ng net income na 5 to 50,000 times... 0 0.05, kasi 5% daw yung bonus percentage, you'll get the answer of 262,500. Okay, tapos ang letter A, bonus is 262,500 using the formula. Okay, next, this one, the next condition is after bonus but before tax. Okay, so ibig sabihin, kukunin mo yung yung net income na nadedakta na ng bonus pero hindi mo pa nadedakta ng tax sa sa ulo di ba okay so let's just use the formula 
So we have first, we have bonus is equal to B percentage times NI minus bonus. Eh, hindi mga alam ko anong bonus eh. So we look at it at this way. So this is the formula. You can jot this down, jot this down. You can note this. You have 5% times net income the, all, uh, all over <laughs> divided by 1 plus B percentage. Okay, so let's do it. So, using the formula, we have B percentage of 0 0.05. Okay, dapat hindi ko na nilagay yung percentage. Eh. Mali yun eh, mali yun. Times net income na 5,250 divided by 1 plus 0 0.05. So, if you input this in your calculator, you'll get 250,000 bonus. O, di ba? You, you were saved by this formula. Thank you so much, authors of the books. Ano? Okay? So, you have 250,000. Next, condition number C, letter C. You have after bonus and after tax. Okay, if i-algebraic mo to, mahaba siya. Gawin na lang natin na formula. Ang haba, diba? Ay, tsagayin nyo na. Okay, At, kesa naman sa sumala ka mag-transpose, mag-minus, mag-add, mag... Nakalimutan mo na algebra mo. Okay, but if all else fails at nakalimutan mo formula mo, idea ano eh. Ano, algebraic na lang. So, let's do this. So, we have B percentage times the quantity of NI multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus tax percent all over 1 plus B percentage times 1 minus tax percentage. Okay, you are always given the income tax rate. So, let's solve this. So, your B percentage is 0 0.05 times the net income na 5,250 times 1 minus 30% tax rate. Okay, then sa baba, we have 1 plus 0 0.05 times 1 minus 0 0.30. You'll get, for the numerator, is 183,750 and for the denominator, is 1035. And your bonus, after computing using the formula, is 177,536.23. You can actually uh, check this, okay, by, um, by completing the computation for the tax for the uh, sal uh, for the bonus and net income ano so yun next oh di ba pa sa tayo we have after tax but before bonus okay this is after after ito ay after tax but before bonus so your bonus is computed as b percent times ni times 1 minus tax percent and then Actually, ito lang yun. Alam lang yung dinagdag. This one. 1 minus B percentage plus B percentage times 1 minus. So, ito yung nadagdag sa equation. Yung 1 minus B percentage. This one is 1 only. This one is 1 minus B percentage. So, I'm just pointing it out. Para isa lang ang sasauluhin mo. Tapos, dadagdagan mo na lang ng isa pa. Isa pang B percentage. Ano? So, let's compute. 0 0.05 times 5,250 times 1 minus 0 0.30. So, wala nagbago. 183,750 pa rin siya like this one. Okay, this one may magbabago. 1 minus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.05 times 1 minus 0 0.30. You'll get 0 0.985. And then, the bonus is 186,548.22. Thank you so much, authors of the book. Okay, so, yan. So, di ba? Madali lang ang computation natin ng tax, tax, tax. Okay? Sorry if nag stutter ako ah, kasi awan ko naghahalo-halo na ata ang subject sa utak ko eh. Okay? Kasi mamaya tinuturo ako sa inyo, tinuturo sa inyo is advanced accounting. Anyway, so see you, see you, see you on our next guided exercises number two which is premium and warranty liability. Bye-bye!